Welcome to our lecture online. Here's a really interesting problem that may throw you for a loop. It did me initially until I realized mm, I just should stick to what I know and based on that it's actually not a bad problem at all. Let me show you why. Well let's read it together. It has to do with simple harmonic motion. Already you look at the figure and you go hmm wait a minute that's at an angle what's going on there. And if you read the problem, it says, in the given figure, a body of mass M is held between two massless springs on a smooth inclined plane. The free ends of the springs are attached to firm supports. If each spring has spring constant K, the frequency of oscillation of the given body is, and they give you four possible answers. So there's two things about this particular problem that may make it a little more difficult initially when you think about it. First of all, there are two springs, one on each side. Secondly, it's on an angle. Does that angle really matter? And also notice that there's no friction, there's no energy loss as it's sliding back and forth. But does that angle bother you? It did initially for me, I go, wow, do we have to take that into account? But think about it this way. Let's say we have a situation that looks like this, where we have a horizontal situation with a single spring. Spring constant K, mass M, and here, the frequency of oscillation f is going to be equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of k over m. But what if we have a situation that looks like this, where you have something hanging from the ceiling? And again, spring constant k, mass m, and you wonder what is f equal to, and guess what? It's also equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of k over m. It's the exact same frequency, and it doesn't matter if it's horizontal motion or vertical motion. Simple harmonic motion, that is. Why is that? Well, a lot of students call in, or write in, I should say, and they say, well, shouldn't this be different? And the answer is no, and the reason is this. You attach the mass to the spring, and you allow the spring to come down, elongate, until the force of gravity is negated by the force in the spring, and then the object will have its new equilibrium position and everything will be negated. It doesn't matter this gravity, it's being negated by the force of the spring pulling back. Then when you pull on the spring and the spring, the object begins to move up and down with the oscillatory frequency, at that point gravity is no longer a factor, and <laughs> that's one of our dogs by the way, and that is why you have the very same equation for the, for, for the frequency of oscillation, regardless if it's this or this, which means that it doesn't matter if it's at an angle, Horizontal, vertical, at any angle, you get the exact same equation. Secondly, secondly, we have to worry about the fact now that we have two springs. And does it matter if both of these springs are on one side, or one is on this side, and the other one is on that side? The answer is no, it doesn't matter. But there's two springs, so in this case, the K equivalent of having two springs like that is equal to both of them added together. It's k, essentially, it is k plus k, which is equal to 2k. So the equivalent uh, spring constant of both springs acting on the same mass is 2k. And so then you realize that f must equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of the equivalent k divided by the mass, and in this case that's equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of 2k over the mass of the object m. And notice if you go looking for the right answer, it looks like c in this case will give you the right answer. And that is how it's done.